Hi, welcome back. This is Next Gen Picks. Picture this. You drop $1,500 on a brand new TV, bring it home, kill the lights for movie night, and suddenly you notice a strange foggy halo glowing around every subtitle. Or maybe it's a bright Sunday afternoon, you pull the curtains open, and your premium display instantly turns into a $2,000 mirror, reflecting your own disappointed face more clearly than the football game you're trying to watch. It's maddening, right? The industry wants you to believe that premium automatically means flawless. But after more than a decade of tearing these displays down to the sub-pixel level, I can tell you the truth. Every single TV technology has a failure point they conveniently leave out of the glossy marketing brochures. Hi, this is Next Gen Picks, and honestly, I'm done with the gaslighting. Whether it's an OLED that slowly dims itself into an early grave, or a mini LED that crushes shadow detail just to flex its black levels, today we're calling out the trade-offs. If you're exhausted by sponsored hype and just want to know which screen won't disappoint you three years down the road, do me a favor. Hit that like button and subscribe to Next Gen Picks. It's the only reason we stay independent and keep these brands accountable. Now let's stop talking about buzzwords and start talking about reality. We're living in the most confusing chapter of TV history. It's 2026, and the refresh rate arms race has officially gone off the rails. Budget TVs are now claiming 144 hertz, while flagship OLEDs are pushing 165 hertz. And if you're not careful, you'll end up paying extra for a number your brain literally can't perceive. But let's begin where most buyers do, the LG C5 OLED. This is the follow-up to the legendary C4, and to be honest, my expectations were low. For years, the C-Series has been all about tiny, safe upgrades. But take a look at this thermal map from our lab testing. See that heat distribution? That's not accidental. LG's new Alpha 9 Gen 8 processor isn't just marketing noise. It's actively regulating voltage across the organic pixels more efficiently than anything we've seen before. In our tests, the 55-inch C5 reached a peak HDR brightness of 1,174 nits in a 10% window. Last year's model topped out at 998 nits. That's nearly a 20% increase in real-world impact, something you absolutely notice when watching high-contrast content like Dune. Those Sunskid Desert highlights finally have that squint-your-eyes realism that OLED used to lack. But here's the truth bomb. They won't tell you at the big box stores. This is still a WLED panel. It uses a white subpixel to cheat the brightness. In some high saturated scenes, think a neon soaked cyberpunk city. Those colors can look a little washed out compared to a QD OLED. It's the difference between a high quality print and a glowing neon sign. Gaming wise, the C5 is a beast. All four ports are HDMI 2.1, supporting a full 144Hz refresh rate. If you're a PS5 or Series X owner, you're laughing. But if you're a PC gamer, stay tuned because the next model on the list might make this LG look like a dinosaur. I want to pause here for a second because I want this channel to actually serve you. Tell me in the comments, what specific gear are you struggling to decide on right now? Is it a specific soundbar to match these TVs, or maybe a budget 65 in comparison? Drop a comment below. I read all of them, and it literally shapes what we test next. Moving on, if the LG C5 is the safe bet, the S95F QD OLED is the aggressive one. Look at how thin this thing is. It's literally thinner than my smartphone. But that thinness comes with a price, physical and literal. The S95 is Samsung's 2026 flagship and it's a different beast entirely. It uses quantum dots for its color, which means no white subpixel. When we measured the color volume, it hit nearly 100% of the DCI 3P space. Those reds aren't just red, their fire engines slap you in the face red, plus it pushes the refresh rate to 165 hertz. If you have a 4090 or 5090 graphics card, this is the first TV that actually feels like a high-end gaming monitor. But let's talk about the glare-free matte coating Samsung is pushing this year. On the left, the LG C5 looks like a mirror. You can see every detail of the lamp. On the right, the Samsung S95F diffuses it into a soft purple haze. Is that better? Not necessarily. While it kills reflections, it also lifts the black levels in a bright room. 
In a sunny living room, the Samsung's infinite blacks can actually look a little grayish. It's a trade-off. Do you want a mirror? or do you want a slightly hazy screen? And we can't talk about Samsung without mentioning the elephant in the room, no Dolby Vision in 2026. It is still baffling that a $2,000 TV won't support the most popular HDR format on Netflix and Disney+. Samsung is betting everything on HDR10+. But let's be real, you're missing out on the most refined metadata in the industry. If both of those feel like they're going to blow your budget, we need to talk about the mini LED revolution. The TCL QM8K is currently the most disruptive TV in the US market. TCL is claiming 5,000 nits of peak brightness on this model. When we put our sensor on it, we actually saw it sustain 3,100 nits on a full screen white slide. That is obscene. It's three times brighter than the LG OLED. If you're a bright room owner who refuses to close the curtains, this isn't just a recommendation. It's your only real choice. But check this out. The QM8K uses over 2,000 local dimming zones. This is where the OLED versus mini LED debate gets messy. In a bright scene, the TCL wins. But in a scene like gravity, when a tiny white astronaut is floating against the void of space, you will still see a tiny bit of blooming, that faint glow that the OLED simply don't have. If the battle between LG and Samsung feels like a fight over who has the flashier spec sheet, then Sony is the quiet guy in the corner of the room who actually knows what he's talking about. Let's look at the Sony Bravia 8i. Now, look at the price tag first. Yeah, it's expensive. You're paying a Sony tax, and in 2026, that tax is steeper than ever. But here's what the lab data shows us. While the Samsung S95F is screaming about its 165 Hz refresh rate, Sony is over here using its XR processor to do something most TVs fail at, upscaling. Most of what you watch isn't native 4K, it's 1080p from a cable box or a compressed stream from Netflix. Look at the edges of the players. On the budget set, there's this mosquito noise, that blocky digital fuzz. On the Sony, the AI identifies those artifacts and smooths them out without making everyone look like they're made of plastic. And let's talk about the panel. Sony is using a QD OLED panel here, hitting 1,567 nits on a 10% window. That's actually higher than the LG C5. But Sony's secret weapon isn't the brightness, it's the acoustic surfaced audio plus. Instead of tiny, tiny speakers firing at the wall, the entire screen is the speaker. When a character on the left side of the screen speaks, the sound actually comes from their mouth. It sounds like a gimmick until you hear it. Then every other TV sounds broken by comparison. But here is where the trust first part of me kicks in. Sony, what were you thinking with the remote? This is a $3,000 television, and they gave us a remote that doesn't light up in the dark and feels like it came from a 2010 DVD player. Plus, you only get two HDMI 2.1 ports. If you have a PS5, an Xbox, and a high-end soundbar, you're already out of ports. In 2026, that is a legitimate deal-breaker for power users. Now, if you want the absolute most bang for your buck in terms of raw hardware, we have to look at the Hyans U8QG. This TV is weird in the best way. Hyans decided to throw a USB-C port on the side that supports DisplayPort video at 165Hz. You can literally plug your MacBook or your phone directly into the side of the TV with one cable and use it as a massive monitor. The U8QG is a mini LEDD beast with 48 dimming zones. In our Starfield test, where we put a single white dot on a black background, this thing gave the OLEDs a run for their money. The blooming is almost non-existent. But here's where the quirk is, the black crush. Hyance is so aggressive about stopping that mini LED glow that they sometimes overdim the zones. If you're watching a horror movie, you might miss the monster hiding in the corner because the TV decided that corner should just be off. You can tweak it in the settings, but out of the box, it's a bit too aggressive. And then there's the software. Hisense uses Google TV, which I love, but their processor is, let's call it, optimistic. It's not a deal breaker, but compared to the snappy, instant response of the LG or Sony, you can feel the hardware struggling to keep up with the fancy animations. 
If you're sitting there thinking, next gen picks, I just want a good 55 in TV for under 800 bucks, then the TCL QM6K is your target. The QM6K is the little brother to the flagship QM8K we talked about earlier. It only hits about 600 to 800 nits, and it only has 120 hertz instead of 144. But here's the thing. For 90% of people, that is plenty. In a room with the lights on, the difference between 1,000 nits and 3,000 nits is actually hard to see. You only notice the QM8K's power when the sun is hitting the screen directly. The fine print on the QM6K, the stand. These feet are set at the very edges of the TV. If you have a narrow TV stand, this thing literally won't fit. You'll either need a new piece of furniture or you'll have to wall mount it. It's a classic budget TV move to save money on the stand design. But here's the real insider secret I promised you, something called the panel lottery. In 2026, companies are still doing this shady thing where the 55-in model of a TV might have a high contrast VA panel, but the 50-in or 65-in version uses an IPS panel with terrible black levels. Or worse, they swap them mid-year based on which factory is cheaper. This is why I always tell you to check the specific model number suffix on the back of the box. If it ends in a B instead of an A, you might be getting a completely different screen than the one I'm reviewing. And don't even get me started on the smart part of these smart TVs. When you buy a Samsung or an LG today, you aren't just a customer, you are the product. They are tracking every single thing you watch to sell that data to advertisers. That's why these TVs are cheaper than they were five years ago. The data is subsidizing the hardware. If that creeps you out, the only real solution is to never connect the TV to Wi-Fi and use an external box like an Apple TV 4K or a Shield TV. It keeps the TV dumb and your data private. So we've looked at the pure blacks of the LG C5, the neon glow of the Samsung QD OLED, the nuclear brightness of the TCL, and the brainy processing of the Sony. But which one actually earns a spot on your wall? Before we get to the final verdict, I want to show you one more thing that literally no one else is talking about. The input lag gap. Marketing tells you one millisecond response time, but that's a lie. That's pixel response, not system latency. We found that the Hiance U8QG actually has a higher real-world delay than the budget TCL when you're playing in HDR mode. If you're a competitive gamer, that 10 millisecond difference is the difference between a win and a loss. So we've looked at the specs, we've looked at the nits, we've even looked at the microscopic subpixels. But now we have to talk about the one thing that keeps every TV owner up at night, the three-year wall. You see, a TV isn't just an experience, it's an investment. And if you're spending two grand, you want that screen to look as good in 2029 as it does today. This is where the OLED versus Mini LED debate gets genuinely heated. Common wisdom says OLED is the fragile one because of burn-in. And look, it's true, organic material does degrade. If you leave a bright red CNN logo on your screen for 10 hours a day, yeah, you're going to get a ghost of that logo eventually. But here's the secret. The big box retailers won't tell you. Mini LED TVs actually have higher rates of catastrophic failure. Because mini LEDs have thousands of tiny lights packed into a tight space, they generate an immense amount of localized heat. In our 2026 longevity tests, we've seen more budget mini LEDs suffer from dead zones where a whole cluster of LEDs just gives up than we've seen OLEDs with permanent burn-in. It's the difference between a car that slowly loses its paint shine, OLED, and a car whose engine just explodes one Tuesday, Mini LED. If you are a heavy user who leaves the TV on for background noise 12 hours a day, the TCL QM8K is the safer bet for pure longevity. But if you're a quality first viewer who watches a few hours of high-end content a night, the LG C5's refined pixel cleaning cycles have basically made burn-in a non-issue for the average person. Now let's get down to the brass tacks. You've got a budget, you've got a room, and you need a winner. Look, I've spent more time with these 2026 panels than I have with my own family this month, and after running the numbers, the best overall isn't the most expensive one. The LG C5 OLED is the 2026 champion for most people. Why? Because it's the most honest TV on the market. It doesn't try to be a mirror, it doesn't try to be a flashlight, and it doesn't try to hide its flaws. It gives you perfect blacks, incredible gaming latency, and it supports every major HDR format, including Dolby Vision. It is the Swiss Army knife of televisions. 
If you don't have a specific reason to buy something else, buy this. You won't regret it. Now, if you're looking at that LG price tag and your wallet is screaming, we have to talk about the Value King. That title goes to the TCL QM8K. For about $400 to $500 less than the OLEDs, you are getting 90% of the performance. Yes, you'll see a tiny bit of blooming if you're looking for it. Yes, the colors aren't quite as electric as the Samsung QD OLED, but for a family living room where the kids are watching cartoons during the day and you're watching football on the weekend, the sheer brightness of this mini LED panel makes it a better real-world choice than almost anything else. It is the first mini LED that finally feels like it stopped guessing what black should look like and started actually delivering it. But if money is no object and you want the absolute Formula One of display technology, the Samsung S95 FQD OLED is the one. It is the brightest OLED we have ever tested. That matte screen is a literal miracle for anyone who hates seeing their own reflection during a dark scene. If you are a hardcore PC gamer who wants that 165 Hz refresh rate, there is simply no competition. Just please, Samsung, give us Dolby Vision in 2027. We're begging you. Before I let you go, here is my final truth bomb. The single biggest mistake you can make right now isn't picking the wrong technology. It's buying a TV that's too small. I see it every day. People buy a 55 in flagship OLED when they really needed a 65 in or 75 in mid-range mini LED. If you're sitting more than 8 FT away from your screen, a 55 in TV is a postage stamp. I don't care if the pixels are made of stardust. If you can't see the detail, you're wasting your money. If you're stuck between a 55 in OLED and a 65 in mini LED for the same price and you're in a typical American living room, take the bigger screen. The immersion factor will do more for your movie night than infinite contrast ever will. I've put links to all of these models below in the description. Those are our vetted links. I've personally verified that those listings are for the 2026 US models, so you won't accidentally buy a 2024 clearance model that a seller is trying to pass off as new. Using those links is the safe path to avoid the hardware traps we talked about today, and it helps keep this channel independent so we never have to take a bribe from a brand. Bottom line, stop overthinking the acronyms. If you're a gamer, get the LG. If your room is bright, get the TCL. If you want the best colors on the planet, get the Samsung. Protect your wallet, trust your eyes, and don't let the marketing guys win. This is Next Gen Picks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next...